Some of you might have done this when you were kids or you still do it or you just have someone doing it for you. When I was a child, I used to go do it, but not all the time. And even if I was in scent, I would just go with the neighbor's kids. I thought it was very special. I thought it was something, something special. And that if you especially grow up in Europe or somewhere else in the world, that you don't get to see this or experience this. Even some kids and others that they don't really experience this. But for me, I think it's very, it's very cool. In order to make our bread, our injera or shiro or anything, we have to make uh, the cereals to powder. Back in the days, we would use it at the houses uh, with uh, you know stone, with stone and stone, and just put it together and then like this, and then you know it becomes powder. Or you use mukajan zena zena, which is like you know you just pound it many times and then it becomes a powder. But it wouldn't be like that perfect powder. So in the modern day world, there is wafcho. So in Ethiopia, we don't really buy everything from the supermarket and uh, there are not a lot of big corporation that's making these things, prepare them and send them to the supermarket. So basically we make everything at home. So we buy the cereals and then we mix them with other type of herbs or whatever, for this shiro, for example. Uh, we buy the um, chickpeas, we dry the chickpeas. Uh, we put some garlic, onions, and other type of uh, green herbs, mix it together, and then dry it. Then when that is both like all mixed up and dry, that is when we take it to Wafchowe, that is a place where there is machinery to make it a powder. So we take it to that place to get it powdered. So today I am going to show you where we get that done and how we get it done. I used to do this when I was a kid. I would go, like, you know, I would be sent. Uh, we do the cereals we use for bread or tape or whatever, but they wouldn't send us because it's too heavy. Uh, when I was a child, I would be sent maybe to get uh, shiro done or, um, you know, some small amount of things that I can carry. Or if they don't send me, I would just go with the kids, you know, of the neighbor's kids if they're sent. I just kind of liked going to Wafcho I don't know, for some reason, I'm just, you know, I just kind of found them to be very interesting. So today I am going to go and, uh, yeah, and show you that because I've got some um, stuff that we need to get powdered up. To go there, first of all, you need to fix what you're wearing because I can't go with my hair like this because that place, there's a lot of cereals that are being... Uh, process to be powdered so the whole air is full of different type of cereal powders so you don't want that to be all over your face and all over your hair so first thing is first is you cover your hair make sure you're wearing something that can handle some dirt or whatever just wear something comfortable cover your hair I'll put on a jacket because it's also kind of raining. So yeah, let's hope my hair is all covered. So I'm ready for walk job it. We're gonna get powdered up. Shiro. To make the shiro powder, we mix broad beans, chickpeas, and lots of types of herbs. For this mix, we didn't add red chili paper, but for the other one, we added red chili paper and the same amount and the same type of herbs that we put on the other one because we want this one to be red and be a little bit more spicy when we make uh, this too. The other thing we're going to get powdered up is a gum for hell, which is made out of barley. Some people use corn or wheat as well. Okay, so we have our uh, I have your gum for hill. <laughs> so we're off to um, Wafchobe! 
We look red star fabulous. Oh, I like my hair bow. And of course, protect yourself. Uh, this is actually nice to, to for wolf throw it. Not just for Corona, but you know, so you don't breathe all of that dust. Okay, let's go to wolf throw it. After we greeted the people respectfully, we put everything we brought onto the mizan. Mizan is a scale. We put everything on the scale because we have to measure how much things that we bring so the man knows how much he's going to charge us. After that, we put everything on the line up uh, with other people's product. Then this way we know when is our turn to make our product that we brought to be powdered. In our national dish, we use injera for everything. Injera is made out of dev. There is two types of dev. One is ivory and the other one is brown dev. The brown one is more pronounced taste, but the nutrition is both the same. Before the dev becomes powder, it goes through this process. So just in case there is particles like straws or any type of things on it to take out all the dirt and the garbage and clean it. After that, all of this straw and the other plants that is not necessary to be in the dev will be left out like this and they give it to the animals. This donkey works here as well. He's the transport method. He's having his uh, breakfast or lunch. He's very protective of his food. When I was taking a video of him and coming way too close to his food and the looks he was giving me was like, woman, get away from my food. It was super funny because other donkeys came and tried to eat his food and he was not happy. The guy actually had to come out and kind of, you know, tell them to go away. And he was crying the whole time, complaining like, these guys ate my food. He complained a little bit and got back to his food. Let's get back to the process of making the dip to powder. So after the first process, they do this as well. I don't know what to call it. So you can just watch what they're doing. And after this, uh, they take out, you know, like after they take all of the not wanted part of that if, uh, they put it in the machine and then it becomes a powder. <laughs> After it's powdered, this wonderful hardworking man put it in the bag and then take it to the measure and measures uh, each bag so it's not too heavy to carry because they're going to transport it. So the donkey is getting ready because she is going to transport the teff that just been powdered. She's still feeding. She had a bit of a fight with the other donkeys that came to eat her food. I keep calling this donkey a she, but excuse me, I just found out it was a he afterwards. So, excuse me, Mr. Donkey. 
I was a bit concerned for the overload of the donkey, so I asked, how do you know that he doesn't get tired or you're overloading him? So they said, that's why they measure before they put uh, the tif on top of him. Uh, they measure it and they know the limit. So they don't put more than 180 kilogram on him. So he's able to move and it's not too heavy for him. So for us, whenever we want, if we call this place and these amazing guys, they prepare everything. And then the donkey and one of the guys will come to our house, drop it off. And we just give them the money. I think this is just super cool and very environmentally friendly. <laughs> so you don't use no car, you use your donkey. And of course, you keep him safe and healthy. And I think it's very, very cool. Like it's the modern meets the old. You call with a cell phone and then they come and drop off your goods with the donkey. So I think that is just amazing. It's out of this world. I really appreciate these small details. Look at this guy. And then he comes, he drops it off to your house and then boom, you got your tiff in front of your door, you pay. The tiff machine is not mixed with a spice machine. So people will bring their spices like this and line them up until the machine starts. When the machine starts, people will start putting their products and then the powder will be collected in a bucket like this. And then you can take the bucket out and the next person can put in the other bucket. And you can collect it like this or yours is a different matter. You can just put your bag directly into the machine like this and collect the powder. In either way, that's more convenient for you. Look at my clothes. My bag. <laughs> oh my God. These are amazing services that you don't get any other place. And I think they're very special and beautiful and a random cow just passing by your house. I think these are things that we're so used to seeing that we take them for granted and not appreciate them. And for me, I find them so beautiful and special. We finished everything up now. We're gonna go home because we got all the powder that we need to make shuro and gumfo. Okay, so I just got back from the Wolf Chobet, but I forgot to teach you word of the day. So word of the day today is beautiful. Beautiful in Amharic is konjo. 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 Konjo, 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 konjo. Konjo. Means beautiful. Yeah. And now I'm going to take all this dust off of me and wash up. I hope you liked this video and learned something new today. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And see you on the next one. Bye! Woo.